Hey everyone, in this video we're going to walk through the steps to solving a problem using the false position method. This method is very similar to the bisection method. If you're unsure how to use the bisection method, I recommend you check out the video I've linked in the description below. So let's just briefly talk about what the false position method is used for, and then we can go through the steps of how you can use the false position method to solve a problem. The false position method is a closed method, nonlinear numerical method, just like the bisection method. So it is a way of finding the roots of a function that is nonlinear. So let's go through the steps of how to use the false position method now. Let's say that we have a function that looks like this. Step one, we define a region, two x values, for which we know that there is a root present. But how do we know this? Well, our first input of x, which I will call a here, will have either a positive or a negative output. Well, whatever output we receive from that output of input a, we want the output from input b to be the opposite of the output of a. This ensures that our function has crossed the x-axis. One common method for validating this is multiplying the two outputs together, as we need one positive and one negative value. The product of these two outputs will never be greater than zero. Now, step two is where we differ slightly from the bisection method. If you recall, in the bisection method, we would find the midpoint of our two root boundaries and see which side of the midpoint contain the root still. Well, this is a very conservative guess. So, do you think there is any way that we could speed up finding our root? Well, what if we draw a line from f of a to f of b, and we take the point where we intersect our x-axis as our new c-value? But how do we find this c-value? Well, let's remember the equation for a secant line. That is, a line that passes through two points is the following. We also know that at our root, y is always going to be zero as we are on the x-axis. Therefore, we can always find our c-value through the following formula. Now, we can apply our output product test. This means that we take the output of input a times the output of input c and see if the product of these two values is less than zero. If so, that ensures that our root is to the left of our midpoint c. If the product of output a and c are positive, then we either have two negative outputs or two positive outputs and our root is not in this region. So we repeat this process for the right of our root and see if output b times c is equal to or less than zero. Whichever side's products gives you less than zero, you know that your root lies in that direction. Then you just adjust your root boundaries using this new information. So like we said earlier, if f of a times f of c is negative, then we know that the root lies to the left of our new midpoint c. Therefore, b takes on the value of c, and we move to our next iteration. And that is really it. That is all there is to the false position method. We just continue to cut our input range through drawing a line between our f of a and f of b. Determine which side's output is less than zero, and we repeat this process until we reach an acceptable level of error. And lastly, we can measure the error through the absolute of a minus b, just like we did for the bisection method. Typically, the false position method will allow you to find your roots quicker than the conservative bisection method. The only drawback for this method is the same for all closed numerical methods. That is that we need to ensure our function only has a single root within a given region of interest, and we cannot have more than one root in that area of interest. Thank you for checking out this video, and I hope it helped your understanding of how we find a root of a function through the false position method. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, and consider checking out our Patreon page to support the channel. However, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the information I provided in this video, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to address your concerns.